The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'm going to tell you, I'm I heard it from a very reliable source. I was sitting at a chasana, and he comes over to me, and I've told you, you know, in Moshe Kufitz, in Manchester, she was Aiden. And a chasana, he sits there, I said, oh, I'm trying to have to tell you, I'm going to tell you, he has a son who's a Magid Shir in Yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael. And at night, he says a Shir, there's a group of American Balabatim who, uh, you know, were very matzliach in their business. They settled in Eretz Yisrael. They were semi-retired. And they were doing their business from there. A wealthy group and intelligent. And they learn very Gishmak. And they learn every night together. And this single man gives them a Shir. And they finish the Masechta. And they decided they're going to make a Siyan. Now these chevra, chevra who appreciated the finer things in life, so they brought to this masiba some very expensive whiskey and some good wines. Before you know it, things got a little bit more friendly than they were planning, and it became a very lebedic event. And one of these chevra gets up, and he says, I want to tell you my life story. And he tells the following, my son, no, he says, my parents were survivors of the war, they came out of the war, they had nothing, and they had totally given up on Yiddishkeit. They came from Poland, they didn't want to know of anything ever again. I was born after the war. The only thing they did was give me a bris milah, but other than that, there was no Yiddishkeit. I didn't even have a bar mitzvah. The only thing Yiddish in the house was that they spoke Yiddish, because they, they knew Yiddish. I grew up knowing Yiddish, they read the Yiddish newspapers. As I got older, I started to fall in with the wrong chevre. I made some bad friends. And we were engaged in all sorts of illegal activities. And I was making a lot of money. I had two shoot from Goyim. And uh, I was a rich boy. And one day, we had to have a meeting in a certain restaurant with some chevre. We're going to make a deal. And it was a big deal. I walked into this restaurant, a free man. And I walked out in handcuffs. The whole thing was a sting operation. They were FBI agents. They were following us. And they taped the entire conversation. Yeah, as I'm in my early 20s, I'm facing a long, long jail term. I don't know what to do. So we were three chabra, two goyim. One of them skipped bail, never heard from him again. The other one decided to turn state's evidence and he agreed to talk and reveal what I did. So he got a lighter sentence. I was left holding the bag and I was facing a sentence of 25 years in prison. I didn't know what to do. I was walking down the street. I went to the most expensive lawyers in Manhattan. I was a rich boy. I was able to afford the best. And I told this big lawyer exactly what my story is. He says, look, it doesn't look good. They have you. It's, it's, they have you on tape. They have everything. But I'm going to try. I have to put down a big retainer, tens of thousands of dollars. I was broken a shivra clean. I start walking down the streets of Manhattan. I'm crying the whole way till I get to the east side. And I was hungry, so I walked into a diner, and I ordered a coffee. And I'm sitting at the table, and I'm crying into my coffee. Suddenly a fellow walks in, a little berdel. He sits down next to me, and he says, what's your problem? I said, I looked at him, <laughs> leave me alone. What do, you, what do you know about problems? You're going to help me with my problem. What do you know about problems? He rolls up his sleeve and shows me a number. He says, I know all about problems. You tell me what your problem is. So I started to talk to him. And I told him my whole story. He was a very bright man. He understood very quickly what was going on. He knew I was in big trouble. He says to me, listen, you don't need a lawyer. What you need is a rebbe. You come with me. He took me to an apartment building up six flights of steps, and there there was the Alta Skolia Rebbe. He had a tzura like a malach. And he brought me in. I knew Yiddish, I was able to talk to him. I start crying, I tell him the whole story, what happened. And the Rebbe looks at me and he gives a smile. He says, Don't worry, everything's going to be okay. But at, at the court, when there's going to be the whole thing, you should know your lawyer is going to come late, but don't get nervous, everything's going to be all right. So, I came, there was a court date set, the, the, the court session was for nine o'clock, we're all there, the FBI agents are there, 
and uh, my lawyer doesn't show up, and the judge is getting nervous, he's getting angry. Where is he? Where is he? Finally he calls in, he's stuck out of town, he missed his flight, he can't make it, he's sending a substitute in Senate. Substitute, to send a substitute. I'm here fighting for him. I'm 20 years old, I'm facing 25 years in jail. Should we waiting and waiting? 10 o'clock walks in, a kid, he's maybe 21, 22 years old, he's wet behind the ears. Hi! I'm here to represent you. Your lawyer sent me instead. I nearly fainted. This kid's going to represent me. What? I... So the prosecution presented all the facts and how they, they caught me and I made a deal with them. And this guy gets up and he starts talking. The first five minutes are able to follow what he's saying. After that, he's getting all dramatic and all theatrical. And he's giving a speech. He's going on and on. And the people are smirking. They're laughing. And the judge is getting hot under the collar. He's tapping with his fingers. You can see he's getting very, very upset. He's angry. The guy goes on for a full hour. After he finishes, he sits down. And the judge looks at the FBI, head of the prosecution, says, What's the matter with you guys? This is how you present the case. You guys pull up your bootstraps. You have no evidence. Case dismissed. I walk out of that. I didn't know what world I'm in. And I see this. this I call over this young lawyer. I says, that's, that's unbelievable. What, what were you talking about there? He says, my first case. I said, what? <laughs> this is your first case? I said, yeah. He says, you saw the judge? He said, it's my grandpa. <laughs> So, I knew I better go back to the Rebbe. So I went back up the six flights of stairs, and I said, listen, Rebbe, how did you know that the lawyer is going to come late, and how did you know this is going to be his grandson? Well, what's going on? He says, listen, the dinner zoom. How I know, I don't have to tell you. But one thing I know, when someone does you a favor, you owe him a favor back. You owe me big. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Says, I'm not asking you to keep Shabbos. I'm not asking you to become religious. I want you to go buy a pair of tefillin and promise me you're going to put on the tefillin every single day. See, either that or 25 years inside, I'll take the tefillin. Okay? So I was in the east side. I went down to a few swarm stores. I walked in the way I looked, you know. I said, I want to buy a pair of tefillin. No one wanted to sell me a pair of tefillin. How I, what do you need a pair of tefillin for? What's good? They wouldn't sell it to me. Finally, one guy said, I'll tell you what. He says, I'll sell you a pair of tefillin. You go down to Crown Heights, it's Rabbi Jacobson. He'll teach you how to put on tefillin. If he gives you a letter that I can sell you a pair of tefillin, I'll sell you a pair of tefillin. So I had to go down there, and he taught me the halachas of tefillin. And I brought back a letter, and he sold a pair of tefillin. And I started putting on the tefillin every day. And here I am, an Erev Chayid, I'm a God of God, of Kindua, sitting in Kaila, learning Torah. Why is show you? I said, what's the lesson of the story? No. So one person said to me, lesson is you see, he's getting, sitting and crying. You go over and say, what's your problem? Very important lesson. Another one says, he's not spoiled. How times have changed. Nobody would sell him a pair of twillin. <laughs> a different world ones. But perhaps we have to take another lesson. The judge looked so angry and so stern. And it looked so terrible. In the situation, there's no way out. The judge is my grandpa. The judge is not my grandpa as my tata. Sometimes we look at the tata and it seems dark. It seems like he's not interested. He's not listening to me. It may be Khalila, but he's unhappy with me. No, no. The judge, the tata, the melech wants only, only our toiva. He's so concerned about each and every one of us. He's so waiting for the opportunity to give us shefa, bracha, and share simchas with all of us. That's what he wants. It's a process. Sometimes it seems difficult, sometimes it seems dark. But all along, the person was so frightened, what's going on in all the day? He was being prepared. The judge is preparing what he needs to have. A great on the issue. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.